from Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. If, for such a small word, it packs a wallop. If I live to a hundred, if social security isn't enough, if my heart gets broken, if she says yes. We believe if should never hold you back. If should be managed with a plan that builds on what you already have. Together, we can create a personal safety net, a launching pad for all those brilliant ifs in the middle of life. You can call on our expertise and get guarantees for the if in life. After all, we're MetLife. There's a world of investment opportunities out there. Spotting them takes experts on the ground, assessing potential firsthand. Templeton, a pioneer in global investing for over 50 years. Gain from our perspective. Issue one, blowout, clean up. In case you're wondering who's responsible, I take responsibility. It is my job to make sure that everything is done to shut this down. President Obama on Thursday held a rare press conference to address the Gulf of Mexico BP oil spill. Obama hoped to show the American public that he was in control of the disaster that entered its sixth week and he had his work cut out for him. A Gallup poll taken last Monday and Tuesday shows that 53% of Americans believe Mr. Obama is doing a poor or very poor job of responding to the spill. To reverse this tide, the president is arguing that his administration has been involved for the past 40 days, since the very beginning. The American people should know that from the moment this disaster began, the federal government has been in charge of the response effort. But make no mistake, BP is operating at our direction. Every key decision and action they take must be approved by us in advance. But Mr. Obama also takes the blame for relying on the oil companies to deal with this type of oil spill. Where I was wrong was in my belief that the oil companies had their act together when it came to worst case scenarios. Question, is it a coincidence that President Obama waited until BP started to make progress sealing the oil well before holding a press conference, Pat Buchanan? No, I don't know that the two are directly related. I do know the President of the United States had to get out in front of this, John. He has not shown urgency. He has not shown passion. He has not shown engagement. The polls show the country thinks he's been dithering and diffident and his government appears not to be on top of it, relying on BP. At the same time, some of them are blaming Bush and blaming everybody else. So I think he's been hurt very badly by this. And the very fact that he came out for that press conference, I think is to try to get back out in front of the story and get him as a leader, him solving the problem. Was he late to the story? I, was, I think they're very, very late. Uh, well, political cleanup is like the oil cleanup. The sooner the better. And I think this story really did get away from him. Uh, there was too much reliance on BP early on, too much belief that American technology could solve this uh, quickly. And uh, that didn't happen. And it's also this president's personality. I mean, he, it's no drama Obama. He tends to hang back until the situation looks almost irretrievable. Think health care reform or even during the campaign uh, when the whole issue of Reverend Wright was going to take the campaign down and then he retrieves the situation with a, with a fantastic speech. And I think there's more to leadership, though, than mm -hmm. assembling all the best minds and organizing everything. Mm -hmm. You have to make an emotional connection. And I think he, he's begun to make that emotional co connection now. And I think we want him to understand how much this gulf means mm -hmm. in terms of the ecology. Yeah. And I think that's what's been missing. Okay, uh, hold on for a minute, Mark. Take it up from here. The MMS mess. President Obama says he didn't move quickly enough to repair the service charged with the regulating and rewarding of the drilling. The Minerals Management Service, the MMS. It has been connected to an array of ethical lapses from accepting bribes such as gifts, alcohol, trips, and some sexual favors to allowing oil companies to fill out their own inspection reports. The culture had not fully changed in MMS, and I absolutely I take responsibility for that. There, uh, there wasn't sufficient urgency in terms of the pace 
of how those changes needed to take place. Question, is it a coincidence, Monica, that uh, Obama fired the head of the Minerals Management Service on the very morning of his news conference? Well, remember, when he gave this news conference on Thursday, the question was asked about the departure of the head of the MMS, Elizabeth Birnbaum, and the president seemed not to know whether she was fired or whether she had resigned under her you own volition. You believe that? You believe that? Well, look, heads needed to roll, so the president of the United States ought to know whether or not he fired this woman. She was a, she was a, she was, she was, she attended Harvard, very green, right, but she had and clean. No, but she had no experience whatsoever in oil and natural gas domestic production. None. And remember, that was the rap on Michael Brown during Katrina, the head of FEMA. He had no experience either. Look, I think that this story has reached a tipping point. We're heading into the sixth week of this mess. And a lot of people are now under the impression that, that, the, that the president has not been engaged. I mean, there are a number of things that he could have done immediately. He could have declared, declared it a national disaster area. He could have immediately mobilized the Army Corps of of engineers. He could have immediately ordered tankers to the region like the Saudis do when they experience big oil spills in the Persian Gulf. You get these tankers on the scene. They can suck the oil out and separate it from the seawater. He could have given the Louisiana governor, Bobby Jindal, exactly what he wanted immediately rather than allow all of these bureaucracies and agencies to stall what Jindal was asking for and some of these other governors, what they were asking for. So the danger for him is the perception of incompetence. And that's what stuck to Bush after Katrina. And it is a very dangerous for a uh, proposition for a president. Okay, there man. Oh, hold on. So. Hold, okay, yeah. man. Where are you, man? You got to get down here and take control of this. Put somebody in charge of this thing and get this thing moving. We're about to die down here. Question: What set off the raging Cajun? Was it the devastation to his home state, Louisiana? I ask you. It was the point I was about to make, which is that Obama had too much faith in the oil company, BP. They were giving what we now see are incorrect. They were lowballing the damage, the, the, the leak volume itself, uh, the damage that was being done, their capabilities. That's what Obama meant when he said that that uh, they uh, proved not to have their act together on this kind of a deep sea uh, disaster. This is unprecedented. At 5,000 feet, the technology that works in, in much shallower water proved to be a lot trickier. And this All was, right. the, uh, uh, by, the, by the way, it, it was a coincidence that, uh, that uh, Obama happened at his news conference when the news was turning mm -hmm. favorably because even as he was speaking, you were seeing live video of them uh, pushing the, uh, the mud down the pipe. Well, and they didn't know even then if it was going to work no, he, If he's going to be associated with this, he wants to wait. That's the supposition. Mm -hmm. Until there's a little wait for BP. So, James, listen to James <laughs> some more. What happens if President Obama lets BP and not the U.S. government run the cleanup? If he comes out and, he, and he's detached and he lets BP run the cleanup, it's going to be, it, it'll be Katrina, it'll be worse than Katrina. Question, Kabul isn't the only political strategist likening the Gulf to Katrina. Karl Rove made the same point in the Wall Street Journal op-ed piece. Mm -hmm. He says, get the government involved. Why the bipartisan harmony on this? Well, all, all the right was pushing from day one, calling this another Katrina, and, and they, they were crying wolf, because uh, on the one hand, they're saying Obama's been too intrusive into private enterprise, and now they're saying, why isn't he taking over BP? I mean, that's a Carville kind of message, so I'm not surprised to see him look coming pretty out bad like for that. Obama? Uh, I think he can retrieve the situation. I think he's begun to do that with the visit to the Gulf and the, and the press conference. And also, I, I don't think people are blaming him, you know, for the leak or even the fact that it hasn't been stopped yet, but they want a sense that the uh, administration is mobilized for a cleanup that is likely to take, excuse me, likely to take years. And mm. what he should have done is, is immediately name a high commissioner, somebody like Colin Powell, D Doug Brinkley, the historian who lives in the area, is saying you, you need a, 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 an authority figure who can go out to the microphones every day yeah. and relate the information. We're Thad Allen, the Coast Guard guy, is, is filling that role he, he, to some she extent. She may have identified the worst news. That this is going to stretch on. We're going to get reports for this for the next, what, 10 years well, about new damage well, being well, done? Remember that the cleanup for Three Mile Island, the nuclear accident, took over a decade. So this could be a long, slow-moving drip 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 of bad news you're witnessing the destruction of one of the world's most mm -hmm. magnificent and valuable estuaries mm -hmm. and remember after the 1989 Exxon Valdez spill there was uh, something put in place signed into law by President Bush the first one called the Oil Pollution Act and what that required was that in the event of an oil spill the president shall commit to an immediate plan for cleanup mm -hmm. so while this was BP's um, responsibility it was also the president's okay Valdez, by the way they fought 20 years to fought the lawsuit 
it's at only paid oh, a fraction. And they're going to they turn over damages. a lot of rocks uh, looking at the cozy relationship between the oil industry and uh, the Congress and the Republican and, and Party. And, uh, and the Obama and the administration Party. gave BP the, the a waiver 10 days drill, before this drill, explosion. Drill, 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 baby drill. <laughs> drill. The drill, baby, drill crowd, which is not going to okay. look pretty. You can't let me, let me summarize with these sad stats. Spill volumes, 20 to 40 million gallons. Spill spread, 3,700 square miles, the size of Delaware and Rhode Island combined. Spill ongoing, 40 days. Exit question. The name of the Gulf oil well that blew up was Macondo. Will the name Macondo live forever as the world's most accursed environmental horror? Macondo? No, I don't <laughs> believe it will, John. What's going to live on is the perception of the government of the United States utterly incompetent in plugging a hole in the Gulf of Mexico, which did untold damage to the country. At the same time, we can't balance a budget, win our wars, or protect our borders. Oh, it, is no. deeply it, is damaging, damaging government. it is damaging to, 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 to government, but I believe that government is going to perform. And secondly, it's BP that will live on in, in infamy. Mm -hmm. And Thank it's you. the oil industry that's going to take a big hit here and is going to be in the same problem that the nuclear uh, industry was for a while. Is, and she that's right? well, is she right on that? This is not so much... Obama as it is BP that's going to live on Well, I think the storyline right now is the Obama administration versus big oil. But this is such a huge ecological disaster. And we're going to get more and more reports about all of the, uh, the agency and the administration actions leading up to this explosion. For example, the administration gave BP a waiver on environmental rules and safety of safety review 10 days before this particular rig mm -hmm. blew up. That is when we get more and more reports of that, it is going to be sustained political and that's why MMS needs to be overhauled. Is this going to be know, the most accursed world environmental horror of all time? Oh, it already is as far as the actual physical damage. But, John, let's not you forget. You think it's going to live on let's that Let's not way? forget a couple things, though. For one thing, the polls, as much as they've been critical of BP, most people still want to have offshore drilling. Most people say, say that, yeah, we need to replace fossil fuels, mm -hmm. but that's the long term. In the short term, we're stuck with this. So that's mm -hmm. why I think you're still going to find some common ground up there on Capitol Hill. Right now, uh, every, everything is stalled on offshore John, drilling. Your answer. This will issue will be back. Way? John, it will it rank. It will live on with a double life, John. I think it's <laughs> it going to be the, mo the world's it, most accursed. It, it environmental rank. horror probably rank. of all time issue two sestak saga did the white house offer you a position in the administration if you would not run yeah i i was asked that question months after it happened and i felt an obligation to answer it honestly and mm -hmm. i said yes can you but tell bob, us what job no bob i and then i said at the time anything beyond that just gets into politics that's pennsylvania democratic congressman joe sestak he says he was offered a job by President Obama in exchange for dropping out of a Democratic Senate primary. The background. In February of this year, Sestak mounted a primary challenge against sitting U.S. Senator, the iconic Pennsylvania politico, all inspector, five-term, 30-year incumbent. Specter was the preferred choice of President Obama after Specter switched parties and became a Democrat 13 months ago. Over the past four months, Sestak has been claiming that the White House offered him, Sestak, a job so that he, Sestak, would drop out of the race, paving the way for a Specter six-term victory. Sestak said no to the White House and defeated Specter in last week's Pennsylvania primary. This is Sestak's story. What does the White House say? The White House admits that it did have conversations with Sestak, but that everything was above board. No quid pro quo, which would have been very illegal. During his press conference on Thursday, the leader of the Democratic Party, Barack Obama, was asked whether he would speak for the official record on what job Sestak was offered. To which Mr. Obama replied, uh, "You will get it from my administration. So, um, and it will it will be coming out. When I say shortly, I mean shortly. I don't mean weeks or months. I can assure the public that nothing improper took place. But as I said, there will be a response uh, shortly on that issue. That Obama response came on Thursday. On Friday, he disclosed that White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel." 
currently in Israel, by the way, contacted former President Bill Clinton and proposed to Mr. Clinton that he contact Congressman Sestak and ask Sestak to drop out of the race against Alan Specter. If he were to, in fact, drop out, he would be given a job. That's Sestak from the president on the president's intelligence advisory board. The board operates on expenses only. The board members are non-salary. Question, did that offer from the president via Rahm Emanuel, via Bill Clinton, clear the White House of any rap, Pat? John, that is an absurdity. I think this whole story has been concocted. If that were what was going on, why didn't they say so months and months ago? Why did Sestak den- say, I'm not going to talk anymore about it? The, rum- the rumor going around, of course, it is what Secretary of the Navy. If that was what was offered, it is a criminal offense, John. More than that, in order to give someone the Secretary of the Navy, you need the approval of the President of the United States of America would have to be in on the deal. This is headed for a special Pat, prosecutor. Pat, Pat, calm down. When he walked into the, when, into the green room earlier, he noted that because of the statement that the White House counsel had put out, the story was a nothing, nothing burger. <laughs> and now he, I was, he said I that was that laughing about it. It's Pat. a nothing burger. Right. That was on the record, right, Pat? <laughs> no, you changed your tune? No, I was what? laughing about the concoction. I oh, said, it's just a nothing no, burger. No, I don't think so, because... <laughs> Are we we are Buchanan here. <laughs> the president, quickly, quickly. the president appointed somebody Secretary of the Navy before uh-huh. our inspector had even uh, changed party. So the job was filled. It was going to be open. It was filled, and so he's thinking this is would be a promise down down the sure. road. And uh, unless but, he's got evidence to prove okay. otherwise, uh, I think the White House has come out with now. a perfectly acceptable cover kind of story. <laughs> Let's check this out. This is a letter written to Attorney General Eric Holder by all Republican members of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Jeff Sessions, John Kyle, Tom Coburn, Lindsey Graham, Chuck Grassley, John Cornyn, and Aaron Hatch. Dear Attorney General Holder, we are writing to urge the appointment of a special prosecutor to investigate Congressman Joe Sestak's claim that a White House official offered him a job to induce him to exit the Pennsylvania Senate primary race against Senator Arlen Specter. Such an offer would appear to violate various federal criminal laws, including 18 U.S. Code 600. Now, this is an abbreviation of that code, but you can check it out for yourself. This is 18 U.S. Code 600. Whoever directly or indirectly promises any employment position, compensation, contract, appointment, or other benefit in connection with any primary election shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. (laughs) Okay. So much for the Senate. Right, right. What do you think about that? They're right because the White House said, well, we looked into this. We had our White House counsels look into it. (laughs) You can't have one part of the executive branch investigating another part of the executive branch. That's why the independent counsel statute exists in the first place because it's a huge conflict of interest. Look, you've got. So you think there ought to be an independent counsel? You've got to to have that that, that whole trust (laughs) us uh, argument. Didn't work with Richard Nixon. Didn't work with Bill Clinton. And that's why the statute exists. From Watergate. But also, more right. importantly, though, there is a political problem here because Barack Obama ran on this idea that he would be a new kind of politician who would transform the way old things were done. Mm-hmm. And this kind of ham-handed possible... Uh, these are accusations. Law. These are accusations. Let me, let me just jump... <laughs> right. I mean, the one, the one guy who knows something about the Chicago right. way, okay? <laughs> I, I cannot believe that, that Rahm uh, and Obama would be that naive as uh-huh. to go well, and make some, some flat-out well, offer. Well, they had this lawyer... Dude. Look, the fact of the matter, first of all, Lord. USC 600, I believe, hey. says there must be a promise or an exchange of hey, money. Clarence, and Clarence, we're talking about an unpaid oh, position, uh, you know. Uh, no, it's, it's not, not quite two. money. It's, it's got to be money. direct. No, if you it's read, you, even it, if they wanted indirect. to concoct this, they were smart enough to be If you read 800, you're going to see that it does not require a money exchange. The history of politics. The history of politics. Exit question. Is this a case for a special counsel? Yes or no? Of course it is. You cannot have the White House counsel investigate the White House. House and the well, president and exonerate him think, unless you you're John Eric Dean. Holder is not going to properly investigate this? Is I that think, what you're saying? I the think Eric Holder won't is do pro- it? 
I think he's probably stonewalling now, but I think more calls are going to come. We're going to wind up with an independent counsel looking into this. And we're so not you're gonna, saying that Holder, the attorney general, would not to, investigate this problem? He doesn't want to, but he's going to have you to. You guys have spent too long steeped in Watergate. <laughs> uh, we're going uh, back uh, there, uh, Eleanor. Quickly, Eleanor. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Politicians quickly. persuading people not to run. This was to try to keep him from running. Uh -huh. Giving him an unpaid a post for something he's Look. perfectly qualified <laughs> for as Monica. a former but Navy admiral. Who oversaw our our, our fleet <laughs> in the Gulf is <laughs> the the it's all on. within the elements Ele of the Ele we, we know about the Gulf. Ele Go ahead. Sounds like <laughs> the lesson of modern political scandals from Watergate through Monica Lewinsky is it's always the cover-up and it's never the original crime that's going to get right. you in trouble. Oh, and also remember oh, oh, that the Obama brand right. was to do hey. politics in a different way mm -hmm. and not the rolling hey, in you, the old you Chicago haven't proved way. Right? What do you think you of Obama Emanuel otherwise. being in Israel at this critical time? He's talking hey. to his son's bar mitzvah for Pete's sake. Give him a break. He's talking but, to Netanyahu, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, great. I'm sure you have. But listen, right. Clarence, takes care of that. Yeah. Clarence, but he's kind of pivotal in Clarence, this. He's, Clarence sounds like somebody who <laughs> fell off the turnip truck on the way into town, <laughs> <laughs> believing all this nonsense really? they're putting out. And you sound like the driver of the turnip truck. Thank you. So you're on a Daily scale of Democrat zero to ten, you don't rate your... No matter what your definition of is, is, Pat. Anyway, I'm trying to find out where you rate this on a on a damage scale of zero to ten. Ten being oblivion. Such that I give it a three on a scale of ten, yeah. And rising, yeah. I think, they, uh, I think they may wind up with a special counsel. Issue three, around the world in 210 days. I don't consider myself a hero. I'm an ordinary girl who believed in a dream. You don't have to be someone special or anything special to achieve something amazing. you just got to have a dream, believe in it, and work hard. Jessica Watson is the youngest person in history to sail around the world. She is 16 years old. The Australian teenager made her epic voyage in a 34-foot boat called the Pink Lady. Jessica's journey began in Sydney on October the 18th, 2009. She sailed northeast through the South Pacific and across the equator, then headed south, rounding the tip of South America at Cape Horn. Jessica then crossed the Atlantic Ocean and sailed around South Africa's Cape of Good Hope. The last leg of her journey was 4,600 miles, the Indian Ocean. On May 15, two weeks ago, and 210 days after she set sail, Jessica arrived back in Sydney. After traveling a total of 26,500 miles over seven months, Watson battled 40-foot waves and experienced six knockdowns, including one that tipped her boat to the point that the mast touched the ocean water. Now get this. Jessica did it alone, all by herself. No crew. How did she do it? In her own words, quote, people don't think you're capable of these things. They don't realize what young people, what 16-year-olds and girls are capable of. It's amazing when you take away those expectations, what you can do, unquote. Okay, here's the anticlimax. The official judge for speed sailing world records will not recognize Jessica's trip. Why? Because that World Sailing Speed Record Council has discontinued its quote-unquote youngest category. Jessica's historic journey is not an official world record, therefore. Jessica, by the way, has been sailing with and without her sailor parents since she was eight years old. Question, why didn't the World Sailing Speed Record Council of Australia recognize Jessica Watson's historic achievement, Pat? John, I don't know. It is an historic achievement, but apparently they don't have the younger category there anymore. Well, and I don't know the if, reason is that. But they look, this well, woman, because this they young don't want to sailed. encourage other kids to do it. Oh. They don't like having well, having that, kids that young uh, trying this kind of a stunt. Have you heard of it in loco Oh yeah, I've heard of it. Uh, and uh, have you heard of that? Uh, what's, what's that TV show where the kids are always doing the crazy stunts all the time? I mean, kids well, love to well, copy each other. we had the boy with the balloon. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, balloon boy. Yeah. yeah John, yeah, that's right. this is John. That's well, unfair. Are you, are you criticizing uh, this uh, action on the part of this young lady? Who's been well, I think her, her action is magnificent. But we're, we're kind of playing with fire if we encourage uh, young people around the planet. John, maybe, maybe you forgot the young girl who died years ago. Watching that, I was thinking to myself, I'd like to meet her parents. 
how did they <laughs> raise her to do this, to have that sort of composure to be out alone for that amount of time without <laughs> an iPod? Or maybe she had an iPod. Uh, well, you know, in terms know of, that of, they know of, their of children. provisions and everything. Yeah. There were some children they would say no to, but yeah. there were other children in the same family they would yeah, say yes but, to. Yeah, but you, but you wouldn't want. I think Clarence is right. You wouldn't want too many people trying to copy her, thinking they could do it. Well, but I think well, she should be recognized. We had the thirteen. She definitely should be recognized. About the thirteen-year-old who climbed Mount Everest right. on the right. most difficult yeah. trail. In the, right. in the last two weeks, he well, finished. There, there are some many, super, super beings. Well, but what most should, people should be the attitude of the general public category. despite this, 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 well, look, uh, this, this primordial girl, council? This, <laughs> this girl this is exotic clearly, group over there. This girl is clearly extraordinary. And as you pointed out, she's been sailing with her parents since the time she was a very mm -hmm. little girl. So it wasn't like and the it's parents a were send, sending her out there as a complete novice. But look, they should recognize her. And she's, a, a, first of all, adorable. Secondly, a great sportswoman at a very young age. Age, and I think a great role model for young no, girls. I, I, I want to say, I want to save such Australia at large. Seventy-five thousand people and a small armada of one thousand five hundred boats turned out for her Sydney Harbour homecoming. John, this so is, the people I, have the wisdom. I can't oh, yeah. believe the knocking of this. This girl is like Charles Lindbergh, who took off and threw. Yeah. 33 hours across right. the Atlantic. Right. Alone. It is a tremendous thing. And to say their mommy and daddy shouldn't have let them go. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say Lindbergh. that. I did not say that. I said I wanted to meet them. How did they raise this child? <laughs> right. And, but I do the think. Is, I, 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 take you. the child. Yeah. I, 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 raise chickens. Raise, raise children. Raise this child. Raise Depends this child. Depends on your kids, believe me. And, 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 she, sh and she definitely should be recognized. Yes. But I don't think. We necessarily uh, should, should set, set her up as, as an <laughs> should example. Should she set an example? Yes or no? I follow. think she's an extraordinary role model for young girls. Rahm Emanuel will, will be gone from this administration by Labor Day. Yes or no, Pat? Even money. Eleanor? No. <laughs> After the midterms, replaced by Valerie Jarrett. We agree. After the midterms, but not before. Uh, gone. On this Memorial Day weekend, we salute our fallen U.S. troops. Investing takes perspective. It comes from navigating up and down markets for 60 years, spotting opportunities at home and abroad. Global investing from Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective.